out. I'm back and I'm checking my canvas. I spent 10 minutes checking my canvas's level after last week's um, issue. It's worth it. You know, you really don't want to ruin a painting and get a spirit level. This one's found it in the back of the shed when we moved and I had a white base. It's a bit frothy because I've just watered it down. I'm just experimenting with consistencies still. And I'm working on having quite a fluid base. My base is 50-50 house paint and Amsterdam white. Pop the bubbles and now I'm layering a cup. I'll put the description of the colours, the name of the colours down, down in the description. But I can't get away from using these colours at the minute. And that's no bad thing really. Which I'm very fortunate enough to have a demand for these seascapes at the moment. So I'm going to stick with it for a while. <clears throat> I'm going to do a ribbon pour in a figure of eight. And one of the things about recording your videos, even if you don't have a YouTube channel, is you can look back and you can say, oh, why did I do that? I'll fix it next time. Really good way of archiving your work and referencing your work. And I'm trying to lose, use less paint. And here I am adding more. No. So I want the that that aqua to be at the top because that is um, the folk art colour shift paint, and it it, it kind of has a transparent feel and look to it um, against the the white house paint, and it gives that watery effect. And I'm. Don't quite know why. I think <laughs> dragging that stick, <coughs> excuse me, through just to create some more detail at the top of the wave. 24k gold seems to be uh, quite a good addition, although most of the time it's swiped, it's tilted off. And what I've tried to do in this one is really let some of the house paint um, still be there, so not cover it up with colour. And really, I wish I'd let more come through. So this is real-time uh, tilting. Now when you tilt, I find that after a minute or so, it's pretty obvious the way the paint wants to go. There's there's one usually one way um, for this for this technique anyway. If you're doing a flip cut, you can tilt left or right. But for what I'm doing, I don't want to create too many different shapes with the paint in different directions. Although this painting ended up having some gorgeous movement in it. And it is all about composition and movement in your paint, how the paints are, are flowing, how your eye goes around the painting. And you can see that it's looking lovely already and it's just going in one direction towards the bottom right. And what do I do? After this, I start to tilt the other way, and it was a mistake because you'll see what happens. If I'd left that there, it would have been wonderful. But I really wanted to get a lot of the paint off because I wanted to get some pearl cells coming up. I didn't get too many. In fact, the next painting I do, I work on um, watering my paints down even more to get to see what kind of effects I get. But you can see at the top of the wave there, it's getting a little bit wonky. I'm not too worried about that because I can fix it with a swipe. But it's looking good. Now, I'm using the dregs of paint colours and I know I've got... Oh, 
See, it drips off my gloves too. That's something else that I <laughs> I did in my last paint. I thought I mustn't do that. Because I'm tilting quite a lot of paint off. You've got to watch your hands. But I think I could probably actually still use less paint than this. So I stop tilting when the paint's not really moving, okay? You, you, you've done it, you've done enough. Um, give it a really good torch. Have a good look at it. And you can see there's some little cells, pearl cells popping up. <clears throat> and now I am swiping with my cell activators and I, I chop and change. I've got to learn, I've got to know which one does what. Um, and this is the soap, I call it soap one because I can never remember the name of it. But the soapy one, um, that causes the paint to really merge together, the colours to merge together in a water colour effect and it will carry on doing that for quite a while afterwards so you have to learn to control it um, and that is something that I'm still working on it's not using too much at all And with this technique, you know, this painting, you can over swipe and that's something I'm learning not to do as well. <laughs> so the next one, I'm pretty sure, oh sorry about my head, pretty sure that's the Aussie Flow Troll, I could be wrong. No. So I, c I just know instantly, that's the varnish. So have a look at the recipes below. I just love the effects that it, it makes and it carries on growing and it's, it's unexpected and it's exciting. But in the same way, I'm controlling it in smaller areas. So this is definitely the Aussie Flow Troll because I always save the Aussie Flow Troll for the white bits towards the bottom so you get more of a surfy effect. So the Aussie Flow Troll, compared to the others, holds the shapes, holds the cells and the lacing a lot more. Um, but that's not what I wanted the others to achieve. I wanted it to achieve different effects. I was thinking while I was doing this, I wish I was a bit of a scientist. Um, and then I'd know, <laughs> I'd know the reasons why you get the different reactions. But honestly, it's just come with experimentation. So you can see some beautiful effects there, really watery effects happening by using the soap activator. I'm not going to call it a cell activator. And I'm just choosing specific areas to go through and swipe. I like using the, the fine point on the kitchen roll because you don't get a sharp line. So this is the wet results and just look, the gorgeous effects, in some ways I wish they'd stop there but they do carry on merging and growing into one another for <coughs> about 20 minutes I'd say.
I love, I love the blues, how they interact with one another. And look at the size of the canvas. I love it. Obviously that's where the paint tilted off. This is the dried results. Um, and you can see it's gorgeous. I, I really like it. I'm trying to catch the light actually because you don't see the iridescent colours. Um, the aqua, the colour shift paint. And you can see where I put my fingers in it very early in the morning. Um, came downstairs, probably with a little bit of a fuzzy head from the night before. I thought, oh, it's dry. No, it wasn't. So I have some retouching to do. But I really do love the effects that all of this produces. And this is a real close up. A bit wobbly, sorry. Really nice. There you go, that's caught the light there. I quite like seeing the texture of the canvas as well. This is a Winsor & Newton canvas. And I love the side. Really nice, really nice feature. Yeah, so a little bit of retouching and I'll show you the finished one at the end. Thanks for watching.